The geologic history of the Ozark region of Arkansas, Missouri spans about a billion and a half years. Geologists have pieced together the story by examining clues in the geologic record, where layers of rock preserve geologic history like pages in a book. But while the book of geologic history has a lot of pages, some have been torn out and others were never written in the first place. Lucky for you, here we offer a Cliff Notes version in which we'll summarize the major plot points, squeezing 1.5 billion years into less than six minutes. But just a hint, nobody says Cliff in the Ozarks. Down here, these are bluff notes. To keep this short, we'll focus on the broadest division of the official geologic timescale, the era. There are four of these, the Precambrian, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. But these eras aren't of equal length. The Precambrian is by far the longest. The Earth's geologic history goes back roughly four and a half billion years, but the rocks exposed in the Ozarks offer no clues to most of that time. So let's start zooming in to the most relevant parts of the timescale. The oldest Precambrian rocks here date back between about 1.3 to 1.5 billion years and are only exposed at the surface in the St. Francis Mountains of southeastern Missouri. These are primarily igneous, related to an ancient period of volcanic activity. Some were extruded onto the surface, forming lava flows and other volcanic deposits like those at Hughes Mountain Conservation Area or Johnson Shedden State Park. Others never reached the surface, but cooled deep underground from magma like the pink granite famously exposed at Elephant Rock State Park. After all the drama of these volcanic eruptions, things went quiet in what would become the Ozarks, and a very long period of erosion ensued, carving down through the volcanic deposits and even exposing some of the deeper granitic intrusions. By the end of the Precambrian, the ancient landscape consisted of moderately sized hills and valleys. The unusually rounded terrain of today's St. Francis Mountains hints at this older landscape, with exposures of the resistant Precambrian igneous rock protruding through younger and softer sedimentary rock. Most of the bedrock exposed in today's Ozarks is Paleozoic in age, and virtually all of that is sedimentary. So those layers of rocks you see in road cuts? They're Paleozoic. Those abundant caves and springs? They're formed within Paleozoic rocks. And those crinoids, or brachiopods, or if you're lucky, trilobites that you find along gravel bars and Ozark rivers? They're all Paleozoic. Such fossils provide evidence of the shallow seas that repeatedly inundated the old landscape. These seas were tropical, as the Proto-Ozarks were near the equator during deposition, thanks to plate tectonics. Over time, thousands of feet of sediment were deposited, eventually becoming today's thick sequences of dolomite, limestone, and other sedimentary rocks. But the story of this era isn't just one of inundation. Drier intervals resulted in erosion that erased parts of the record, and at times beaches and rivers produced layers of quartz sand that became distinct units of sandstone dividing the thicker units of carbonate rocks. The Ozarks also preserve evidence of Paleozoic faulting and uplift that contributed to the structure of the Ozark Dome. Oh, and at least a couple of local meteorite impact craters date to Paleozoic times. Very little of the Mesozoic is preserved in the Ozarks. In contrast to the widespread Paleozoic deposits, only small traces of Mesozoic deposits appear along the region's eastern fringe. Although this era is famous for dinosaurs, only one such fossil site has been found within the Ozarks. There's also a tsunami deposit in southeast Missouri that resulted from the Chicxulub impact, the primary cause of the famous mass extinction event that killed off all non-avian dinosaurs. But essentially, whatever pages of Mesozoic history might have been written in the Ozarks were torn out again by subsequent erosion, and we know very little of what was happening here during that era. The final and most recent era, the Cenozoic, is especially notable not for what was deposited, but rather for what was taken away. This is the era in which the modern Ozark landscape took shape, through continued erosion down into the Paleozoic and even Precambrian bedrock, resulting in deep sinuous river valleys, rounded igneous knobs, gently incised uplands, and staircase-like sequences of sedimentary strata. The Cenozoic bedrock map doesn't really show anything in the Ozark uplands, but it does help define the eastern edge of the Ozarks. Cenozoic deposits do exist in the Ozarks, but they're generally not solid bedrock, so geologists show these on a surficial geologic map instead. These materials tend to be pretty recent, dating back maybe a couple million years at most. Here we only show Missouri, as we couldn't locate comparable GIS data for Arkansas. Unconsolidated sediments along rivers occur throughout the region, while glacial deposits can be found along the region's northern fringe. Glaciers advanced as far south as central Missouri on more than one occasion, but never reached most of the Ozarks. So to answer a frequently asked question, the big boulders at Elephant Rock State Park are not there because of glaciers. As the climate warmed following the final ice age and people spread across the landscape, 
Yet another set of changes began to unfold, culminating in rapid and dramatic effects. Simplifying this story to the error level obscures the full, wonderfully complex geologic story. Bluff notes are great, but you should always read the book. Stick with us as we delve deeper in this series. There are so many fascinating questions, answers, and mysteries to uncover.